well, we've met before. I know that you are a free roamer. You like to present your ideas in a very clear way, and I think people will appreciate that. But I'll give you some some key elements, and not only this this last ones that I shared uh, uh, based on Ricardo's intervention, but also, uh, I mean, how do you see all this uh, playing together, the international connectivity with the European Data Gateway Platforms uh, strategy? This uh, uh, also touch based by Thomas of the democratic versus non-democratic systems, the importance of, of the green approach. I mean, you're from the green uh, 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 side of the European Parliament, so this is something that uh, for sure it's uh, at your heart. And like Ricardo has just mentioned, this is also an angle that the EIB also has uh, in, the, in this portfolio. Then also something that we didn't touch uh, very much uh, today, but I think uh, later on we'll have the opportunity to go deeper into that, but I think it's useful for you to come up with uh, some some considerations on this. The security uh, of, of the infrastructures and the investments uh, matched with the geopolitical challenges that we have, and that was only also one of the main reasons uh, we address the European Data Gateway Platform strategy in, in those four divisions, uh, because uh, geopolitical uh, uh, points are there as well in order to take away. Uh, so, in a nutshell, uh, what I want you to ask, uh, if I may, is how do you see this uh, strategic autonomy of Europe uh, in this sector, uh, taking into consideration all these uh, notes and, and, and important takeaways that uh, the previous speakers uh, have uh, thrown into the table? Reinhard, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, first of all, Philippe, for including me in this great event that you're organizing. I feel honored and I'm very happy. Uh, and I'm learning by participating also. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Maria Manuel Leita Marquez for good parliamentary cooperation uh, on uh, connectivity issues. Uh, I'm happy that we can boast of that. Indeed, you've put a lot of issues on my plate. I'm not sure I can clear it, but uh, I'll give it a shot. Um, let me start uh, with the obvious. Uh, if Europe wants to become a geopolitical player of economic, industrial, and political relevancy, then connectivity is the name of the game. Uh, as you said, uh, Philippe, uh, we're not an island. Uh, we're not an island in the digital ocean. We're not an island in an ocean of great international transformation. And if we don't um, uh, start uh, playing this role, this ambitious role, which uh, President von der Leyen has clearly identified when she set out with her work, uh, we will um, um, become... Um, um, not just less relevant, we might also uh, get uh, into a situation where we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place without uh, the ability that we uh, have been seeking to shape our own future. Um, the uh, connectivity strategy that was first uh, put on the plate uh, by Commission in 2018 um, and which maybe we should uh, start addressing by a different name because nobody really uh, understands uh, what connectivity means unless you're a, a, a real uh, sort of, uh, expert. And, and sometimes I think when, when the Chinese talk about uh, Silk Road and we talk about connectivity, they sound like a poet and we sound like a bureaucrat. Uh, so so uh, uh, maybe we should find a better name uh, for the lack of such. I, I start uh, talking about uh, Europe's Global Partner Europe program, uh, because indeed the connectivity strategy is has to be a global um, effort and not just uh, follow the Eurasian arc as we in uh, initially set out. So the Global Partner Europe program uh, initially included, of course, the digital connect, uh, um, dimension, but to be uh, frank, it was more of a um, sideshow. Um, initially, the uh, connectivity strategy focused more on the 
uh, brick and mortar uh, dimension of international infrastructure um, development. But more recently, we've all understood well that uh, digital connectivity has moved uh, to the very center of infrastructure development. And indeed, uh, sometimes in Europe, we have the tendency of uh, focusing a little too long on the philosophical dimension of our policies uh, and uh, uh, are a bit uh, reluctant to move into the uh, pragmatism that we need to uh, create investment opportunities and to, um, to show that we understand that infrastructure does matter. And um, uh, that's why I believe it is good that uh, in the novel discussions that we're having, uh, connectivity is uh, being made a part of the EU Global Digitalization Cooperation Strategy. And I'm very grateful to the Portuguese presidency that you set out to emphasize the digital dimension of connectivity uh, through your work on the European data gate platforms, but also through your work on Ella Cable, uh, which uh, we're just inaugurating. Uh, so, um, uh, in fact, what you're doing is putting wheels under the car of connectivity. We've had a car without wheels, but now we're also um, moving forward uh, by uh, uh, programming in the ICI in a way that would also take account of uh, connectivity. Uh, when I look at what distinguishes Europe's connectivity policy in all sectors, including in the digital dimension, then it is the emphasis of private sector involvement. That uh, makes a difference uh, between our strategy and let's say the Chinese uh, BRI, which is uh, to a dominating uh, degree uh, state led. Um, but of course, if we want to have a private sector as a partner, we also have to, um, uh, to move forward and uh, give them investment uh, opportunities. I, I see <coughs> four major um, dimensions of the um, connectivity um, um, angle of our uh, of the digital uh, digital angle of our connectivity policy one obvious obviously creating investment opportunities second to uh, invest into diversification of supply chains and into strategic resilience uh, third um, uh, building uh, digital partnerships we just um, um, had the uh, very gratifying experience of agreeing with India uh, on um, connectivity partnership, which uh, focuses also uh, very much on uh, the digital uh, dimension. And um, uh, finally, we should also um, look at the dimension of norm setting and international standardization. And there again, uh, our approach stands out uh, as compared to, let's say, um, uh, China, because we want to uh, pursue this in a multilateral approach. We want to have norms that uh, see uh, that pursue um, the goals of peaceful, secure rules of law-based um, development, open um, um, to. Um, the uh, environmental issues that you have mentioned, um, open and, and, and really addressing sustainability concerns, dealing with cybersecurity, protecting human rights, and also protecting uh, data uh, privacy. Um, I see a great opportunity uh, here uh, developing. I think uh, this is indeed uh, an arena where the European Union is finally moving forward. And I can just uh, reiterate and, and, and commend what you say, said, Philippe. Uh, we need confidence. We need boldness. Uh, at a time when history moves forward in bumps and jumps, we cannot just rely on gradualism. We have to take bold 
steps and the European Parliament is ready and has shown it is ready to support that. And uh, uh, we're very happy that you are um, creating this great opportunity to also signal to the public that we are on the move here and that you're leading this. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.